today. Now, I have been playing the PTS patch for 1.6, so I'm going to be basing all the vendor resets from here on out until the patch. I'm going to be basing them on the actual patch itself. So if I see something that will be good for the patch, I will mention it. If not, then I'm just going to go past it, and I will still give it a mention, though, for right now. So starting off right now, we're going to start off in the terminal down at the bottom of the base right here. We're going to be starting off with the special equipment vendor, and he has, of course, the Liberator, which is really good. I would suggest always picking one of these up because in the patch, these are actually going to be randomly rerolled. So these are actually really good because of talented and competent on it right now. The Historian this week, I wouldn't recommend picking this one up. Even though the Historian is very good in the patch, this Historian has a low base damage and a low headshot damage. The Valkyrie this week has decent critical hit damage at 31%. It's not too great, but the base damage is 18.8, .8, which is actually very good. Or the base damage is actually very good this week. It's not going to be 8.8. .8. Notice that my firearms are very high, so don't take that as my word as it being 8.8 .8 for everybody. But it is still really good damage. We have an X45 with Expert and Determined. We have a Vector with Determined, Sustained, and Vicious. We have a Lavoa with Adept, Vicious, and Deadly. This is actually a very good roll. You can actually get rid of Adept for Brutal or Responsive or Destructive. It would actually be very good because it does have Vicious and Deadly, so it is really close to a God roll, but I would not give it But I would not give it that title as being a God roll. We have a Military M870 with Unforgiving, Sustained, and Vicious. An SRS with Balanced, Skilled, Capable, an M60, not very good talents on it, a Rehabilitated Mask, a Banshee Mask, Vigorous, which actually this one is pretty decent because as you guys know, armor is not going to be the biggest thing in 1.6. So this base armor is actually very, very good. It doesn't have the greatest stamina roll, but it does have health and ammo capacity on it. So I might actually pick up this Vigorous and save it for 1.6. Strikers, not a very good roll here at all. Predator's Mark, Deadeye, now this Deadeye is actually pretty good, it does have armor on it, which is going to be re-rolled come the patch, it does have a good stamina roll, it has health on kill, which isn't great, but it is okay, I would much rather prefer to see health or something like that on it, and it doesn't have ammo capacity, but this is still a very good chess piece. We have a D3 FNC, we have a D3 FNC vest with actually a really good roll, really good stamina, it does have armor, which is going to be re-rolled. Health on kill, which you can reroll right now to health or whatever you desire. And it has ammo capacity. We have a resourceful backpack. We have a Lone Star backpack. A Reclaimer backpack, which this backpack would actually be really good for the patch. It does have electronics on it. It has skill haste and it has ammo capacity. This would actually be a really good backpack for 1.6. So I might actually pick this up as well. We have accomplished knee pads. A tactician's knee pads. Sentry call knee pads. Hunter's faith and Alpha Bridge. So none of the knee pads this week are very good. We have a Sturdy Holster, Cunning Gloves, Gloves of the Nomad. Now these Gloves of the Nomad are actually very good. They have good armor. It actually has max firearms, damage to elites, LMG damage, and critical hit damage. Now if you recall, Nomad is actually very good for PvE content. Damage to elites, LMG damage, and critical hit damage are going to be really good to use for PvE content, especially with Meticulous. I would definitely pick up a pair of these. I am actually probably going to be picking up a pair of these for myself tonight or tomorrow. Final measure gloves. Firecrest gloves with not the worst roll on them. However, they could be better, but these are actually pretty decent. They have damage to elites, crit chance, and LMG damage, and a good firearms roll. We have a stamina gear mod with health, so that is something to take into consideration, considering health is going to be more important than armor in 1.6, so I might actually pick up a couple of these. And we have a performance mod with turret health. We also have a quick release magazine, a loud vent brake, a vertical grip, and a C79 scope. This scope is actually very good because it has a good crit hit damage, it has crit hit chance, and it has headshot damage, so, you want, so if you need a scope with more crit hit damage, this would be the one to go for. Moving on to the blueprints vendor for this week, we have a Model 700, which is obviously something that I'm going to be picking up as I love the Model 700. We have a PF45 pistol, a stamina mask, a firearms vest. So if I were you, I would probably pick up maybe the Model 700 if you like snipers that are bolt action. Definitely pick up the stamina mask and the firearms vest though for preparations for 1.6.
All right, this week at the Advanced Weaponry Vendor, what we have is the Pecan as usual. This never changes. This week is actually a pretty decent roll. It's not the greatest, but it is actually a pretty decent roll. We have the Cassidy, which I would not recommend for 1.6. You can see it in the video that I will have linked at the end of this one. I don't prefer the Cassidy at all. The Centurion, as usual. We have another P4, P4, we have another PF45 pistol. This one with Destructive and Expert. Pretty decent roll right there. We have an MP7 with Accurate, Meticulous, and Responsive. Just a very bad roll. An FAL, a Super 90, an SVD, and an MG5. None of these actually have rolls that stand out to me. A high velocity magazine, a large suppressor with critical hit damage and crit chance, so it would be actually pretty good. You would much rather like to have headshot damage here, but crit damage is actually not that bad of a route to go. We have a hand stop with reload speed and an ACOG scope. All right, moving on to the weapon vendor in the front of the base. We have a whole bunch of worthless purples, an M870 with predatory competent fierce, not a very good roll. The talents that you would really want are all in the wrong slots, such as competent. And then we have a laser, which is not very good. Next, we have the gear vendor, which is right next door. We have an incentive backpack, not a good roll here. And we have a performance mod with mobile cover health. All right, moving on to Autumn's Hope up here by Bullet King. At the gear vendor, we have a nimble holster with armor on it, not very good, and a performance mod with ballistic shield damage resilience. So if you are wanting to do a ballistic shield build, this would be very good as it's going to reduce the damage that is it's going to reduce the damage that you are taking, but I would much rather see the ballistic shield damage increase ones instead. All right, moving on to the Wolves Den safe house up here in the top left. What we have here at the weapons vendor, we have a Lavoa C with unforgiving, brutal, and talented. This is very, very good. This has a good enemy armor damage, it has good base damage, it has unforgiving, which is very, very good in this patch and in the next one, and it has brutal, which is very good for this patch, but it's going to be even better with the next patch because of the changes coming to Seeker. And it has talented, which you can reroll to whatever you'd like. I would definitely recommend picking up one, maybe even a couple of these. I'm actually going to go ahead and buy three of them right now. Next, we have a quick release magazine, and that is it for this safe house. Wolves Den is definitely the safe house to go to this week, guys. Definitely check it out. All right, guys, moving on to Dante's Run, the third safe house on our route. The gear vendor has knee pads, which are accomplished. Not a very good roll, and he has a performance mod with smart cover damage resilience. I'm not going to tell you why, but I would definitely pick up a couple of these, as smart cover is going to make a comeback unless they change it. Because as of right now in the PTS, I know a certain person, a.k.a. Sanctionite, who has a pretty cool smart cover build that he's working on. So I would pick up a couple of these unless they fix it. All right, guys, moving on to the Kerman Station safe house. We have a weapons vendor with a whole bunch of worthless purples, an FAL, and a quick release magazine, both of which are not very good. All right, guys, moving down to the Camp Hudson down the bottom left. At the first vendor, at the weapons vendor, we have a PX4 Storm Pistol, and we have C79 Scope, neither of which are very good. We're going to go ahead and move straight on over here to the gear vendor right next door, and what he has is a rejuvenated mask, which is actually pretty cool. I might pick one of these up. It has skill power, it has good firearms, and it has enemy armor damage, so I might actually pick these up in prep for 1.6. I would recommend you do the same as Rejuvenated is getting reworked as we speak. We also have an Electronics mod with Skill Haste, which would actually be really good for 1.6 for a Healer build, or a Reclaimer or a Tactician build, so I would actually pick up a couple of these as well. Alright guys, moving right along to the Meat Locker safe room, down here in the bottom, we have a Weapon Vendor with a Hunting M44 with a Depth, Meticulous, and Sustained. I would not recommend it. We have an Extended Magazine with Magazine Size, Crit Chance, and Crit Damage. Not very good rolls here. Alright guys, moving right along to Madison Stand Safe House here at the bottom underneath the DZ. What we have here is a Gear Vendor, and what he is selling is a Specialized Backpack. Not a very good roll here. And we have a Performance Mod with Mobile Cover Damage Resilience. Alright guys, moving right on to the Last Call Safe House and what he is selling is a bunch of purple weapons and a tactical SA-58 burst fire, not very good, and a heavy magazine spring, not very good here either. 
All right, guys, moving right on to the ward right about near Falcon Lost. What we're going to have is a gear vendor, and he is selling a rejuvenated mask. Not a very good roll here. I would much rather have the one in Camp Hudson instead of this one. The next thing he is selling is a performance mod with support station duration. Here at the Southpaw vendor next to the DZ on the right side, we have a gear vendor with a relentless backpack. Not very good roll. An electronics mod with very good roll right here. I would definitely pick up a couple of these. Instead of the ones at Camp Hudson, I would pick these up instead. They have good electronics and they have more skill haste. These are definitely going to come in handy for 1.6. I'm going to pick up a whole bunch of them right now. Moving right along to the Grindhouse safe house right here on the right side of the DZ. We have a weapons vendor, and what they are selling this week is an SRS with Swift, Fierce in the bottom slot, and Intense. Not a very good roll. A Tyrant Suppressor, which would be very good on SMGs or a pistol, as it has crit chance, crit damage, and headshot damage. I would definitely pick up one or two of these if you still need them for your SMGs. Alright guys, moving on to the Firewall safe house. What we have here is a gear vendor, and he is selling a vigorous a vigorous chess piece, not a very good roll right here. We also have a performance mod with support station range. Right here, I am going to tell you right now that you need to buy a bunch of these. You need to buy at least one for every performance mod slot on your gear right now. So you got two on the backpack, one on the holster, and one on the knee pads. Pick up four of them right now for the new Reclaimer gear set in 1.6. I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to go ahead and switch a few gear mods around because my backpack is full, but I'm going to be picking up five of these. I'm actually going to be picking up probably about eight of these so I can put them on different builds and not have to worry about it ever again. All right, guys, moving on to the crypt in the last of the safe houses in the light zone, a weapons vendor right here, and we have an AUG A3 para with fierce, unforgiving in the bottom slot and accurate, not a very good roll and a VX1 scope with headshot damage, crit chance, and crit damage. This is a very good scope as it has a lot of headshot damage. I would definitely pick up about three or four of these for all your sniper rifles and or your assault rifles as well. I would definitely pick up a couple of these for sure. So make sure you get these. I'm not kidding. All right, guys, the next things that we're going to be looking at are the Dark Zone vendors, and I'm going to start it off right here at the base at the Dark Zone gear vendor. And what he has is an MK-46, meticulous, competent, adept, not very good, a steadfast holster, a performance mod with smart cover damage resilience, 3%, so slash the one that I mentioned earlier that was 2.5. If you have the DZ funds, pick up the 3%. If not, go ahead and go with the 2.5%. It's not that big of a difference, but if you want to mid-max your gear to the maximum potential, this is the one that you're going to want. We also have a vertical grip with optimal range. I would pass on that. And we have the normal Dark Zone sealed cache as always. All right, starting off our DZ checkpoints, we're going to start in DZ1 on the west side at 31st Street. And what they have for sale this week is an SRS with Toxic, Capable, and Brutal. Not a very bad roll, but it's not that great. The SRS has kind of the lowest of the base damage on the bolt actions. I would pass on this, however, if you do still need a good sniper rifle, this would actually be a very good pickup. We also have accomplished knee pads, and a performance mod with support station duration, and we also have a compensator with stability. The next checkpoint vendor that we are going to be looking at is we're going to be looking at the West 34th Street in DZ2. What they are selling this week is an SVD, not a very good roll here. Uh, prosperous knee pads, a firearms gear mod with good firearms, and it has skill power. Skill power is going to be very useful in 1.6, so I would actually recommend buying a couple of these just in case. I would probably buy about four or five of them just in case you need the skill power for when 1.6 hits, because trust me, your skill power is going to be a very much needed thing come 1.6. We also have an extended magazine with a pretty decent roll right here. It doesn't have crit chance or crit damage, but it does have a good magazine size. It has reload speed, and it has a good rate of fire. So if you still need a good extended magazine, I would pick up one of these. Next up on the DZ checkpoints is West 39th Street, and what this vendor is selling this week is an FAL, not very good, a sturdy holster, a firearms gear mod, a firearms gear mod with signature ability resource gain, and a quick release magazine. This vendor I would kind of ignore, to be honest with you. See, now this is one thing that I'm happy is going to be gone in 1.6. I come out of the checkpoint, and there's AI everywhere. 
I don't like this. I just want to get here and do this video, and they won't leave me alone. The next vendor that we're at is the 42nd Street Checkpoint on the west side. What they have for sale this week is an M45A1 pistol, prosperous knee pads, a performance mod with first aid ally heal, pretty useful for 1.6. It is actually something that I would recommend buying how, if you plan on doing a healer build. However, it's not necessary and the support station is going to do well on its own. And if you're building a healer build, you probably have enough skill power to already heal your team for quite a bit. We also have a CQBSS scope. I would really actually ignore this vendor to be honest with you. The next checkpoint that we come to is the West 46th Street. And what they have for sale this week is a double barrel shotgun. Um, who cares? A forceful vest, not very good. A firearms gear mod with exotic damage resilience. I really would not worry about it too much about exotic damage resilience in 1.6, so I would pass on this gear mod and a vertical grip with nothing that we really want on a grip. All right, the last checkpoint that we're going to come to on the west side of the DZ is the 53rd Street, and what this guy is selling is a PP-19 with deadly responsive and hurried. This is actually a very good SMG in this patch right now, and it's still a good SMG for PvE content in 1.6. If you plan on running a D3 FNC build, because they have given us crit chance on D3 FNC in the next patch, Deadly is actually going to be worth something. So this would actually be a very good SMG for a PvE build for 1.6 and even the current patch. I would definitely recommend picking this up. We have Prosperous Knee Pads. We have a stamina gear mod with skill power, very good amount of skill power, and it's got a good amount of stamina, so I would pick up a couple of these because, like I said earlier, skill power is going to be worth so much in 1.6. You guys have no idea unless you've played it. Skill power is the epitome of 1.6. 1.6 is the return of skill power being necessary, so I would pick this up for sure. We also have a C79 scope, not as good as the one at the base, however, if you don't have the Phoenix credits, I would pick this one up instead. Alright, transitioning over to the east side of the DZ, starting at the bottom at 5th Avenue, what we have is we have an MA70 Express with Deadly, Vicious, Ferocious, actually a very good shotgun right here, it is a one slug at a time reload, so this would actually be a kind of a slow reloading shotgun. But it does have Deadly, Vicious, and Ferocious, which you can reroll Ferocious to whatever you'd want. So this would actually be a very good pickup. We have a Refreshed Mask, which isn't a very good roll. We have an Electronics Gear Mod with Armor. However, 1.6, Armor is not going to roll on Gear Mods. So this is actually going to be rerolled to Health. I would pass on this. We also have a High Velocity Magazine. So this vendor doesn't have anything that great for sale other than the MA70 Express. All right, moving on to the east side of the DZ, starting at East 31st Street. What we have here is we have a Lavoa C with Adept, Deadly, and Swift. The other one is better. I would recommend the other one in Wolves Den instead. We have a Relentless Backpack. It does have a very good roll. However, it is Relentless, so it is not that great. We have a Performance Mod with Pulse Duration, and we have a Flash Hider with Accuracy. Moving on up one to the East 34th Street, at this vendor what we have is an SASG with accuracy, commanding, and determined. Not very good. We have a relentless backpack. Again, a good roll, but it's relentless. It's not a very good talent. We have a performance model with pulse critical hit chance. These are actually very good as pulse critical hit chance is better than pulse critical hit damage in my opinion. So I would pick up a couple of these if you still need them. We also have a small suppressor not very good attributes. I would actually recommend the other one that I mentioned earlier more than this one. Moving on to the East 40th Street checkpoint in the DZ. What we have at this vendor is an MG5 with Ferocious, Brutal, and Determined. A very good roll if you can unlock Ferocious for PvE content and reroll Determined to whatever you'd want. However, if not, if you can't unlock Ferocious, it's not a very good weapon. We have a Sturdy Holster. We have a Performance Mod with Mobile Cover Damage Resilience which this mobile cover damage resilience is very good for the new incursion. I would recommend picking up a couple of these, however they are not required. We have a rugged mini reflex sight with critical hit chance, headshot damage, and accuracy. Almost a perfectly rolled mini reflex sight, but it doesn't have critical hit damage. Moving on to East 42nd Street checkpoint of the DZ vendors, and we have a custom M870 with responsive, vicious in the bottom slot, and talented in the top slot. 
Not a very good roll because of Vicious being in the bottom slot. You could put Brutal on this and have Brutal responsive Vicious, but again, that bottom slot is really hindering this shotgun. We have a specialized backpack. It's actually a very good roll. It's got decent base armor, it's got skill power, and it has ammo capacity. Reroll the main stat to whatever you'd want, and this would be a great backpack for this patch and for the next patch. I would recommend picking up one of these if you need a specialized backpack this week in preparation for 1.6 or if you need one right now. Remember, skill power is going to be very, very important in 1.6, and that is why I would recommend this backpack. We have an electronics gear mod with crit chance, and we have an MK5 scope with headshot damage, crit damage, and crit chance, but the VX1 scope that I mentioned earlier is a lot better. Here at the East 46th Street checkpoint of the DZ vendors, what we have is a classic M1A, proficient, not provident, adept, and deadly. We also have a recovered holster, a performance mod with support station duration. I saw one earlier that had 7%, so it is better than this one, and it was for regular funds instead of DZ funds. And we have a high velocity magazine. This vendor is really not worth the mention. Moving on to the last of the DZ checkpoints at East 53rd Street in DZ 6, we have an SRS with Prepared Vicious Dominant, we have an Enduring Mask, an Electronics Gear Mod with Signature Ability Resource Gain, and a Heavy Magazine Spring. This vendor probably really isn't worth your time. Alright, moving on to the DZ safe rooms inside DZ02 right now. What we have here is a Rehabilitated Mask, Actually a really decent roll, it's got good armor, it's got crit hit chance, and it's got enemy armor damage. You would want to reroll the main stat to either a higher firearms, stamina, or electronics roll, but this is actually a very good rehabilitating mask and I would recommend it to try out in 1.6. We have a vigorous chest piece, we have an incentive backpack, prosperous knee pads, steadfast holster, and cunning gloves. The only thing worth a mention here is the mask. Alright, here in the DZ3 safe room, what we have here is a 93R with skilled, a converted SMG9, a custom P416, an M870 Express, a SOCOM M1A, and an MG5. None of these are actually worth the time to buy. Alright, moving on to the DZ4 safe room with the gear mods. What we have is an electronics gear mod with critical hit chance and a performance mod with 6% self-heal. If you still need first aid self-heal mods, this is going to be the one for you, but I'm pretty sure that everybody has them. They're still good in 1.6, just like they are right now. I would pick them up if you still need them. Alright, here at the DZ5 safe room is the weapon mods, and we have an extended magazine, a suppressor, a hand stop, and a 552 hollow sight. Nothing here to note. All right, moving on to the last safe room in the last spot this week, DZ6 safe room, Predator's Mark mask, D3 FNC vest, a Firecrest backpack, which is actually a very good roll. It's got good armor, it's got skill haste, and it's got ammo capacity. You could pick one of these up and use it now, or you can save it till 1.6. This is definitely a good pickup for sure. I'm actually going to be picking one up right now. The skill haste is going to come in handy in 1.6 with the turrets. Trust me, reroll firearms to electronics or stamina, and you would have a very good Firecrest backpack to use in your back pocket for 1.6 or the current patch right now. We also have Deadeye braces. We also have a Lone Star holster and Firecrest gloves. Firecrest gloves are actually not that bad rolled either. They have marksman rifle damage, crit chance, and crit damage. They have a good amount of armor. Reroll the main stats, either higher firearms, stamina, or electronics. So two pieces of really good Firecrest gear this week inside DZ6 checkpoint, or inside DZ6 safe house. I would definitely pick up both of these. If not both, just pick up the backpack for sure. So that is going to be it for this week, guys. I hopefully you enjoyed and be ready for patch 1.6 with all these tips that I've given you as of what to pick up this week. Also, don't forget to check out Upper Echelon Gamers on Facebook, Twitter, and their YouTube. Also, they just got partnered on Twitch, so big shout out to Chris, aka Sanctionite, and all the guys in Upper Echelon Gamers. Congrats on that. Guys, we are almost to 1,000 subscribers on this YouTube page, so hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet. Hit the like button on the video if you didn't already. And also, drop comments down below what you think are going to be the best pickups this week for patch 1.6. If you don't already know what's coming up in 1.6, I am doing a 
couple of series on 1.6 I will be playing the PTS I already put out one video which is going to be linked at the end check it out and let me know what you think and I'll see you guys next time have a good one everybody like